So I thought I'd record a quick little video along with my uh, painting today as I'm doing this branch on one of my images because I'm going to take and add an impasto layer on the top of this branch so I thought I'd capture that as a video and put it up on our Facebook site. So I'm going to finish painting this last little bit of this branch. I'm uh, using a mixer brush. I've got one of the grungy edge brushes that I built um, that I'm using and um, as you can see over here on my setup I've got my standard mixer brush setup where I use a mask of uh, original copy of my image with some bright color underneath it just so that I can see where I'm painting. Uh, I do have an underpainting of the image so I can turn that mask off and see the underpainting uh, with my strokes and then I can turn it all off and I can see how much of my image I've actually painted so far. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead as part of this video finish this last little bit of a branch and then we're going to I'm going to show you how I use um, an impasto layer to lift up these edges on this branch and make the image look a little bit more 3D. So let me just jump right in here. I'll go back to my paint layer and I'll finish painting the little bit of the branch that I have left. Uh, again with one of my grungy edge brushes that I built. It's kind of a uh, charcoal like brush. Um, very very dry. You get almost a reveal kind of um, experience with the brush. And I'll just finish painting this out and then we'll jump over and do the impasto layer. So just to show you how I do, I always stroke um, in the area of the way that the pixels flow, whether I'm painting fur, whether I'm painting a rock, whether I'm painting in this case a branch, um, you always need to have the pixels of your brush actually simulate the exact direction um, of the actual image underneath. If you start going in the wrong direction uh, those pixels, even though this one is very very dry and we're not mixing a lot of pixels together, um, when you pull back and you look at that image um, it will be very very evident that you um, just you know willy-nilly just uh, moved your brush across the uh, design if you do not go and paint in the direction um, of the image. So uh, this is my normal painting process uh, pretty close up. Um, I actually move the brush again trying to formulate the actual direction of the design. Uh, this uh, cat will be on a separate layer so I'm not really too worried about the fact that I'm painting right up um, underneath his fur uh, because when I do with the fur I will be, have a top layer and I will be bringing, bringing that fur up over the top of this wood so uh, that doesn't matter. So let's turn off our mask quick um, and turn off the underpainting and look and see. So we got a bunch of areas here that are are pretty transparent yet. So we'll hit over the top of those a little bit. Um, I do have an underpainting on this. Um, as you can see, when I turn the underpainting on, it nicely fills in all of those missing brush strokes, but um, I still like to get it um, pretty close to being completely painted before before I abandon the painting process. So we have our piece of wood now and it's uh, it's pretty well filled in. 
So let's move on to what this video is all about, which is to add an impasto layer. I'm going to take my my selection off. I keep a selection on when I'm painting up uh, next to edges like this so that I'm not painting outside the edges, um, even though I do have things clipped a lot of times. So here's the process that I would go through to raise up the edges of this. And I built some impasto brushes or layer styles specifically um, to help me do that. The brush is pretty much irrelevant. Um, impasto is really all about building a layer style. So what I'm going to do is I am going to add a blank layer. And as you can see here, I've got it clipped to my log because I don't want this impasto uh, layer to go anywhere but just on the edges of the log. And then I'm going to go over to my layer styles and I'm going to, I have four different ones um, built. Uh, I'm going to just pick one because in reality they all are pretty close when you're not applying them to a brush. So when we come back over here you can see I now have an effect applied to this blank layer. So with that effect, which is a bevel emboss effect, I'm going to use my same grungy brush and I'm going to go back over here to, to the wood and on the edges of the wood, just on the edges, so this is the one time that um, I actually do have to um, turn on sample all layers because the um, the bevel embossing brush, I want it to pick up the pixels from the bark, um, but I want it to apply the layer style um, on this blank layer to the edges of this bark. So here's, I've zoomed quite close so that you can see the effect. And I'm only going to apply this to I'm only going to apply this, sorry, um, I'm only going to apply this to the very, very edges um, of the branch, not to the entire, um, to the entire bark. So, so zooming out just a little bit, you can see I'm going to pick up like these little tips of where the bark raises up, but I'm not going to paint it over all of these sections of the bark. So let's zoom in here again so you can see. And using my mixer brush, I'm in sample all layers with the same brush that I normally use. Um, you can see that we now get this very raised um, effect. Now you're going, whoa, that's, that's pretty harsh. Um, yes, it is. Um, and we may end up having to change our brush. Um, but the thing is, we don't have to keep this same style. This may be a little bit too harsh. The other thing that we can do is once we applied it, we can lower that opacity way down so that the effect is just barely there. So let's go back over here and pick um, a different layer style. Maybe the one we have is a little bit too much. So let's throw that one away and let's try Let's try a different layer style. Let's see if maybe one that's not quite as harsh. Um, we'll pick another layer style. Um, let's try brush two. And um, maybe we'll try a little bit softer brush. Let's go get one of my textured brushes. Okay, so I couldn't get the thing to clip, so let's uh, start back again. We're We've got our blank layer, we've got a bevel emboss, we're going to try a textured mixer brush. We need to have it in sample all layers so that we can read the pixels from below. Um, let's test this and see if we can get a little bit softer um, embossing than the last one. So brush. Let's see here. Ah, this is a little bit better. So, as you can see, this textured brush has a little bit softer experience than the grunge brush we were using. 
So again, as you can see, I'm not going to go everywhere. I'm only going to go on to these edges just to give us some of this kind of 3D effect, if you will. Just these tips. Zoom back out a little bit so we can see where we're working. And then once we get this applied, we'll probably want to lower the opacity. So it doesn't look so applied. And again, always try to follow the brush, follow the, the pixels that you have in your scene. I mean, you want it to look as natural as you possibly can. So, depending on how those pixels are laying in the scene, follow Follow that design with your brush strokes. And you can look at the thing and see what areas, if it were 3D, what areas look like they would be sticking up the most. Now there is going to be a little bit over here, but not nearly as much as this stuff out here in the front because you've got a narrower depth of field on that part of the picture. So we're probably not going to do much over there just that couple little pieces. Same way as the stuff down inside this log. But this part is the most prominent in your face piece. And so we'll get a little bit more on those edges. And then over here, We'll put a little bit on this edge right underneath the cat. And maybe a little bit along here. Okay. So now we have our impasto raised edges on our wood applied. So let's zoom back in and make some decisions about how deep it should be, how much it should be left. And so we'll lower the opacity just a little bit. And there you have it. It's subtle, but it's just enough to give you some additional texture when you're doing mixer brush painting because so much of your texture is lost when you start to combine your pixels together. I hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to the next one.